On the line with us right now, apropos of all this, is Greg Pallas, the investigative journalist, the author of uh, most recently How Trump Stole 2020 and previously The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, gregpallas.com, greg underscore pallas on Twitter. And Greg, uh, I, I was amazed by your piece this morning, how billionaires picked Putin as Russia's Pinochet. Tell us about this. Well, it was it was weird. It was like a beauty contest. Um, it looked like in the 1990s that the Communist Party was actually going to win real re the election in Russia to take back control under a guy named Zuganov. And so the the oligarchs, the multi-billionaires that, you know, uh, you have to understand Yeltsin sold off 60 percent of the state assets like the big oil companies, the steel plants, nickel plants to these billionaires, made them multi, multi billionaires. And they decided, well, wow, if the communists come back, we're, we're in trouble. So they told Yeltsin, basically, we're going to steal the election for you. But you have to pick a successor who's like Pinochet, Augusto Pinochet, the dictator of Chile. Now, for uh, those who are uh, too young to remember, Pinochet was a dictator who overthrew the elected government of Chile, a communist uh, government. And uh, uh, Anyone that got in the way was murdered. It was mass murder. He literally murdered 3,000 dissenters and prisoners. And that's what the billionaires wanted, a Russian Pinochet. And they even went and sent uh, like the Larry King, the Tom Hartman of Russia to Chile to interview the murderer, uh, Pinochet, who was under indictment for murder, uh, on what type of leader they needed. For Russia. And in, uh, yeah, they, they went, the Russians right. sent, went, actually went to Chile and had uh, Mikhail uh, Leontiev, who is like their, their Tom Hartman, hmm. uh, to interview Pinochet. Who do we need? And the description fit a guy, a minor apparatchik named Vladimir Putin, who, was, who had been the deputy mayor of St. Petersburg, a uh, judo uh, expert, and, not, and unlike Yeltsin, not a drunk. But they wanted someone who was basically a killer who would defend ultra capitalism. And so they forced Putin, uh, who, who didn't want, uh, excuse me, they forced Yeltsin, who didn't want Putin. He wanted one of his American uh, uh, trained advisors. They forced Yeltsin to pick Putin as the next Russian Pinochet. And that's what they got. And in fact, one thing that should be very scary to everyone, the way that Putin made his name, when Yeltsin picked him as prime minister, his first prime minister, that's how he was in place to uh, replace Yeltsin as president. And uh, what uh, um, Putin first did as prime minister was to move Russian troops into Grozny, the capital of Chechnya, which is a breakaway republic. And he slaughtered 50,000 civilians. And by the way, 14,000 Russian troops died. He didn't care. That made him a big hero in Russia. This was the and beginning of his political career. This is 1999. Right. Mass murder of Russian, Russian citizens, civilians in the city of Grozny, which he leveled, just like he's leveling Kharkiv right now. By the way, um, a, uh, our prayers go out to um, Nick Parapolitis, who is our correspondent in Kharkiv. He's in a basement right now trying to stay alive. Oh, man. Um, and so I'm getting reports from him. Uh, uh, you know, our thoughts with him. So Putin, you have to understand, is this, was picked in a kind of beauty contest to who would be the most like this killer dictator Pinochet. And he won that contest and got the billionaire's backing. And that's how he became supreme. And then proved his, proved his Pinochet credentials by the mass murder of his own civilians in the city of Grozny. So look out, Ukraine. Yeah, and has, and has held power ever since. Um, yeah. You pronounce uh, uh, Pinochet's name with a hard T at the end. I, I had always well, heard Well, because he's, he's uh, uh, cause people uh, Frenchify his name. It's Pinochet because right. he's it's Spanish. It's not French. I see. Okay, so that's how they pronounce it in, in uh, Chile. In Chile, yes. Is Pinochet. Exactly, where, I, where I've been and seen and talked to the victims of his torture chambers, his murder spree, and that's literally who they use as their model. Well, we had billionaires to find Putin. And, and, and not just there, by the way. I mean, I, we last last summer, uh, I guess it was the summer before last when when, you know, we had uh, right wingers in here in Portland showing up, you know, trying to provoke street fights and things. 
Uh, you know, one of the more common pictures, one of the more common T-shirts that they were wearing was free helicopter rides for liberals, you know, with a graphic of people falling out of helicopters. That was that was something that Pinochet uh, did. Right. You have to understand that one of Pinochet's favorite favorite sports was to take dissenters and throw them out of helicopters. Right. And this is the guy that Berezovsky and the oligarchs, the multi-billionaire oligarchs chose because they didn't care how much blood it took to keep control of their billions. All right. Well, there's there's also a Chicago school connection here, is there not? Oh, I mean, yeah. it was the Chicago school who brought, you know, Milton Friedman and, and his buddies from the Mont Pelerin Society and the, you know, the, the whole neoliberal movement who brought uh, Pinochet to power and, 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 and also helped bring Putin to power. Well, in, indeed, as, uh, as you know, Tom, I was the only American in the Chicago Boys group out of the University of Chicago that created this free market, so-called free market miracle. Yeah, you were a student of Milton Friedman's. I was a student. I was a protege of Milton Friedman um, as a, a postdoctoral student. And, um, you know, they, they, it was a murder spree. It was enforcing the free market with human slavery. Right. And it disgusted me, and I, I turned away from it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, it's an absolutely amazing story. Uh, and you can read all about it over at gregpalace.com. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you can follow Greg on Twitter at Greg underscore Palace. Greg, thanks for dropping by, and thanks for the enlightening little bit of history here. That was uh, fascinating. You're welcome, Tom. Yeah, always good to talk to you. We'll be back. Uh, more of the news of the day and your calls in just a moment. 40 years of Reagan's revolution. Uh, this libertarian experiment have only brought us crisis and chaos.